Hi everyone, and welcome to another Roofing Contractor q and I'm RC Editor Art Eisner, and I'm really glad to be joined today by Mike Tui, General Manager of Bilco. Uh, hi Mike, welcome to uh, the RC Q&A studio. Uh, tell us quickly a little bit about what Bilco does. Sure, uh, thanks for inviting me, Art. Um, we are a manufacturer of uh, specialty access solutions. We make a, a line of uh, roof access hatches, automatic smoke vents, uh, some safety accessories that go with those products, and a line of uh, underground vault access doors. Um, that's on our commercial side. On our residential side, we make basement doors and uh, window egress walls. Gotcha. And uh, uh, tell us where you're located and how many employees. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're our headquarters is in um, New Haven, Connecticut. It's just a, an office based there and a lot of our um, administrative support and engineering and sales are located there. We have manufacturing facilities in Zanesville, Ohio for our residential products and uh, Truman, Arkansas and Santa Teresa, New Mexico for our uh, commercial products. Got it. So tell us a little bit about how 2020 began for Bilco and what you were looking forward to this year. Yeah, well, it was interesting. You, you know, we had a very strong start to the year. Um, and, and then, you know, the bottom fell out in March. I'd almost categorized March almost like two months. You know, the first half of the month continued the strength that we saw in January and February. And then, it, you know, it went in the tank in, in, in the middle of March, uh, kind of continued into April. Uh, we began to see improvement in May, and that was kind of led by our, our residential products initially. Uh, you know, one of the things that was also interesting was that the, the number of orders that we received um, during the down months never really declined, just the quantity of the products on those orders. You know, our, our distribution partners continue to order, but I think they were just keeping their inventories at a minimum to, to maximize cash. Got it. And so as, uh, as the COVID-19 pandemic set in, what were, some of the, uh, what were some of the initial things you did right away from a health and safety perspective uh, to keep business going? Uh, well, you know, immediately we started shifting our people into working remotely. Um, you know, we were, I think, pretty proactive in that respect. And we, we talked about it and within a few days, we had, you know, virtually anybody that could work from home, working from home. We put a, um, you know, a strong safety program together in all of our facilities from safety protocol, <clears throat> excuse me, from, uh, you know, temperature monitoring to plexiglass shields to, you know, extensive sanitization of, of the facilities. And, you know, by and large, I, I think we did a really good job with that. And what, uh, as far as the, the transition went, uh, as it's continued on now, has uh, now that the health and safety you know, was taken care of, has the priority shifted as far as uh, what you're focusing on now to keep the business going? Um, well, I think you know the, the business has is, is started to come back. You know, I mean, we've just ensured that uh, you know all of our our people are continuing to be very vigilant about all the you know the safety protocols that we put into place. But you know, business is definitely coming back. Um, you know, uh, you know, June was a, a pretty good month. Uh, I would say it's been kind of fragmented geographically. Um, sales on the West Coast and the South have been strong, but, you know, I'm not quite sure how that's going to, you know, continue given the recent flare-ups in some of those, you know, geographical areas. The uh, upper Midwest and, and New England have been improving. Um, Pennsylvania and, and, and Massachusetts, and particularly the Boston area, seem to be rebounding. And, and those are two of the states that seem to be hardest hit by shutdowns. Are the concerns you're hearing from some of your customers more related to you know, uh, construction project delays or flight out cancellations? Or what, what is on top of the mind? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, that's, that's a very good question. I mean, that's one of the great unknowns that I have is, you know, we're, we're seeing obviously some, some pent up demand now, you know, hitting, you know, hitting our order books and whatnot. But I, I do wonder, you know, if a project was deferred, has it gone away forever? Um, or is it going to come back, you know, just at a, at a time to be determined? And, you know, I think time will tell. I think a lot will depend on what sector it was in, you know, was funding available? If somebody was doing something that was, you know, somewhat speculative, eh, you know, we, we may not see that project. And, you know, I don't know how we'll ever capture that. Okay, got it. Well, obviously, a challenge uh, throughout this year to carry that momentum you experienced early on in 2020. Part of that too uh, uh, is the trade show circuit. 
Um, and without having you know that uh, that to rely on or focus on this year, how have uh, how have you adjusted uh, introducing yourself to contractors in the market, letting them know what Bilco does, and uh, what are you looking forward to, say for IRE twenty twenty one? Are you guys you know, already starting to build plans? Yeah, we're uh, we're we're planning to be there. You know, hopefully it takes place in you know the normal format. We did have a number of uh, trade shows that ended up getting, you know, canceled or shifted to virtual formats, uh, you know, from probably April onward um, earlier this year. But, um, you know, it, it, it's gonna be interesting. Um, I, I just lost my train of thought, sorry about that. Oh, that that's okay, just regarding uh, uh, the trade shows and, and what, what you might be looking forward to, because the experience will obviously be somewhat different, uh, regardless of how it goes off. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that we've been doing is, you know, without access to, you know, a lot of face-to-face, -face, um, you know, discussions with people relying heavily on, you know, some of the social media things that we do and some of the electronic promotions that we do, um, you know, just to try, drive people to our, our website, um, you know, so we can still maintain contact with them. We do, um, you know, technical bulletins from time to time just to keep the Bilco name and, you know, anything new that we may have, up, you know, in front of our, our audience. Do you, do you view this entire pandemic experience as a game changer for, for how you're doing business as well as maybe the entire roofing industry? You know, that, that's, it, it's going to be interesting. I, I, I think everybody has learned to operate remotely and, and, and found for the most part that that can be done pretty successfully. Now, you know, what kind of shape that takes you know, in the future re remains to be seen. I think it's going to be, you know, vary by organization, um, you know, kind of circling back to safety. I think, you know, one thing that we've all learned that safety has always been critical in the construction industry, but I think the, the pandemic has really only heightened everyone's awareness of the importance of that. You know, everyone seems to be refocused on PPE and, and other safety protocols to, you know, protect employees, whether it's, you know, somebody coming into your office, somebody coming into your plant, or, you know, how you deal with things on a job site, you know, taking a delivery or anything like that. So it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting shift. Um, you know, go, going forward, it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of impact that has, um, you know, from a working remotely standpoint on the construction industry. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we just start to see organizations downsize their office footprint, um, you know, and that's going to reflect fewer people working in there, you know, they still may need an office, but they're just not going to need as much space. So, you know, we're probably going to see a, a shift in like commercial construction as a result of that, you know, somebody that's got 50,000 square foot office may say, well, you know, my people are working remotely totally or cycling in, you know, we can get by with 15,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think that's another one of these great unknowns. You know, I've, I've been in the business for a long time and, you know, we just had a discussion on, on another topic earlier this morning, but, you know, you get out your crystal ball in past years, you at least could make some educated guess and it's a lot more difficult right now in, in these times. Right, uh, and big, uh, big ripple effects uh, certainly to come. Uh, what's been the biggest surprise as this crisis has evolved from your perspective? Um, you know, kind of going back to, to working remotely, I just think it's, it's proven that, um, you know, it, it can be done. Um, you know, if you had told me, you know, March 1st that you're, you know, we're going to be conducting meetings, you know, Zoom calls or, you know, uh, Teams meetings with, you know, 30 different people on the line, you know, I, I would have had a hard time saying it would go smoothly. And it's, I've been very surprised. I mean, people have adapted to the technology and it, and it, and it's worked out really well. Um, you know, and it, you know, across all sorts of different organizations, big organizations, small organizations, everybody's, you know, seemed to adapt to it. You know, you, you get the, you know, occasional situation where somebody's, you know, dog runs through or their kid comes in, to, you know, gets some Cheerios, but you know, that's kind of the nature of the beast. And I, I think it, 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 it kind of humanizes just the fact that everybody's in this together and we're all figuring it out together as well. Right. What, uh, what are you proudest of as far as your people are an organization are concerned and what are you optimistic about? Um, I, I think I, I'm, I'm proud of the way everybody's, you know, come together, you know, and adapted all the, um, you know, the safety protocols and, you know, they all recognize that, you know, we made safety the number one priority 
throughout the organization. And everybody's adapted to, you know, a new set of rules. And, you know, they, they recognize that, you know, it's, it's very important that they address these things. Um, looking forward to, you know, we've got some new products that we, we're going to get out. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to getting back to seeing customers too. I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. You know, to me, business travel is kind of a, a key linchpin in, in normalcy. And there's still a lot of hiccups associated with that. I mean, you know, we're, our people are traveling, you know, on an as needed basis. But, um, you know, until there's a vaccine, I, I think it's going to be hard for people to kind of get back in their, their normal um, travel, um, you know, routine, so to speak. Okay. Uh, Mike, where can we find out more about Bilco? Uh, you, can, you can visit us at www.bilco.com. That's really our all-encompassing, um, you know, resource for customers, contractors, and, and the design community for complete information on all of our products. Okay. Well, thanks again for joining us. And for everyone out there, I appreciate uh, your time for checking in with us. Please check back at roofingcontractor.com for more coverage of the industry, industry. And be sure to sign up for our new digital edition by hitting the uh, subscribe button just above us and to the right. Uh, stay safe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for having me on, Art.